people who had to work to eat. Walikuwa ni aina ya watu ambao walikuwa wanapaswa wafanye kazi ili wapate chakula. He was just a priest well away from Jerusalem. Alikuwa alikuwa ni kuhani kutoka huko Yerusalemu. And this was the only time in his whole life. Na huu ulikuwa ni wakati katika maisha yake yote that he would go into the temple. Ambao ali alikwenda ndani ya hekalu. If you think that living a wholesome godly life doesn't matter, think again. Uh, kama unadhani kuishi maisha ambayo yanampendeza Mungu sio jambo zuri, ni vizuri ufikirie upya. Elizabeth's name, uh, jina la Elizabeth literally means nilikuwa lina maana hii. God is my abundance. Mungu wangu ni Mungu wangu ni 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 ni, ni, ni abundance ni vingi ni mwingi Mungu wangu ni mwingi and Zacharias's name means na jina Zakaria lina maana remembered by Jehovah aliye aliye kumbukwa na Yehovah let's look at Luke chapter 1 verse 6 hebu tuangalie Luka 1 mstari wa 6 both of them who we get rid of na wote wawili walikuwa wenye haki mbele za Mungu wakiendelea katika amri zote za Bwana na maagizo yake bila lawama This was an equally yoked couple. Hawa walikuwa ni wanandoa ambao walikuwa wameungana kikweli kweli. Both of them were faithful to God. Wote wawili walikuwa waaminifu mbele za Mungu. They were spiritually dedicated. Walikuwa watu watu wa kiroho waliokuwa wamejitoa kikweli kweli. They were growing together. Walikuwa wanakuwa pamoja. Neither of them had neglected their spiritual growth. Hakuna yeyote aliyepuuza ukuaji wao wa kiroho. And the Bible says they were blameless in the sight of God. Na Biblia inasema ya kwamba hawakuwa watu walawama mbele za Mungu. You see while Herod was spending millions building buildings. Uh, unaona wakati Herode yeye alikuwa anatumia mamilioni ya mapesa kujenga majengo. Zechariah and Elizabeth were building their lives. Uh, Zakaria na Elizabeth walikuwa wanajenga maisha yao. They were investing in the God of heaven. Walikuwa wanawekeza kwa Baba wa kwa Mungu wa mbinguni and they were building their characters. Walikuwa wanajenga tabia zao. This is important. He hili ni la muhimu and it hasn't stopped being important. Na halijawahi kuacha kukoma kuwa la muhimu. The Bible goes on and says. A Biblia inaendelea kusema. And which like to read verse 7. Uh, fungu la 7. Now walikuwa hawana mtoto maana elizabeti alikuwa tasa na wote wawili ni wazee sana he was a dedicated faithful couple uh, hawa ni wanandoa waliokuwa wamejitoa kikweli kweli wakfu but they still faced problems in their life lakini bado walikabiliwa na matatizo katika maisha yao let me just pause here and make this point. Hebu nitulie kidogo ni niweze kueleza jambo hili. If you are facing a problem in your life, kama una unapambana na tatizo katika maisha yako, it doesn't mean that God has turned his back on you. Haina maana ya kwamba Mungu amekugeuzia mgongo. It's not a sign that you've been faithless. Haisio ishara ya kwamba umepoteza uaminifu wako kwa Mungu. Zechariah and Elizabeth were blameless in the sight of God. Zakaria na Elizabeth walikuwa watu wasio na lawama mbele za Mungu. And yet they still had a problem. Lakini bado walikuwa na tatizo. Let's read on in verse 8. Hebu tusome zaidi mstari wa 8. Basi ikawa alipokuwa akifanya kazi ya ukuhani katika taratibu za zamu yake mbele za Mungu. Yes, yes. Kama ilivyokuwa desturi ya ukuhani kura ilimwangukia kuingia katika hekalu la Bwana ili kufukiza uvumba na makutano yote ya watu walikuwa kisali nje saa ya kufukiza uvumba 
akatokewa na malaika wa Bwana amesimama upande wa kuume wa madhabahu ya kufikizia mstari wa 12 verse 12 Zakaria alipomwona alifadhaika hofu ikamwingia 13 lakini yule malaika akamwambia usiogope Zakaria maana dua yako imesikiwa na mkeo Elizabeth atakuzalia mtoto mwanamume na jina lake utamuita Yohana verse 14 Mstari wa 14 Nawe utakuwa na furaha na shangwe na watu wengi watakufurahia kuzaliwa kwake kwa sababu atakuwa mkuu mbele za Bwana hata kunya divai wala kileo naye atajazwa roho mtakatifu hata tangu tumboni mwa mamaye Mstari wa 16 Na wengi katika Waisraeli atawarejeza kwa Bwana Mungu wao naye atatangulia mbele zake katika roho ya Elia na nguvu zake ili kuigeuza mioyo ya baba iwelekee watoto na kuatilia waasi akili za wenye haki na kumwelekea Bwana tayari kumwekea Bwana tayari watu waliotengenezwa God didn't forget Zechariah and Elizabeth. Mungu hakuwasahau Zakaria na Elizabeth. God remembered Zechariah and Elizabeth. Mungu aliwakumbuka Zakaria na Elizabeth. He sent his angel to meet with Zechariah. Alimtuma malaika wake kukutana na Zakaria. And the angel said to Zechariah. Na malaika akamwambia Zakaria God has heard your prayer. Mungu amesikia ombi lako. You see, Zechariah had one prayer. Unaona Zakaria alikuwa na ombi moja. He had one prayer and that was prayer was for his wife. Na alikuwa na ombi moja na ombi hilo lilikuwa juu ya mke wake. Zechariah didn't put Elizabeth aside and take another wife. Um, Zakaria hakumweka pembeni Elizabeth na kuchukua mwanamke mwingine. He kept Elizabeth. Alimtunza, aliendelea kuwa na Elizabeth. He loved Elizabeth. Alimpenda Elizabeth. He prayed for Elizabeth. Alimwombea Elizabeth. And God heard his prayer. Na Mungu akasikia ombi lake. My brothers and sisters. Ndugu zangu na dada zangu. Keep praying your prayers endelea kuomba ombi lenu because god hears kwa sababu mungu husikia and god answers our prayers na mungu hujibu maombi in the same way he heard zechariah's prayer kwa namna hiyo hiyo ambayo alisikia ombi la zakaria he hears your prayers anasikia ombi lako and in the same way he saw zechariah and elizabeth's life uh, he sees your lives because your life matters to God. And he was a king. A king. He could have gone to King Herod. Angeweza kwenda kwa mfalme Herod. But he walked past Herod. Lakini akamruka, akamruka Herod. And he went to Zechariah. Na akaenda kwa Zakaria. God didn't go to the high priest in Jerusalem. Mungu hakwenda kwa kuhani mkuu kule Yerusalem. He didn't go to one of the other leading priests. Hakwenda kwa mkuhani mwingine ambaye alikuwa anaongoza. He didn't go to a wealthy man. Hakwenda kwa mtu tajiri. He went to a faithful man. Alienda kwa mtu aliye mwaminifu. A local priest. Ali, alikuwa tu ni kuhani wa eneo fulani mahalia. Living a godly life. Aliye kuwa naishi maisha ya utawa. With his faithful wife. Akiwa na mwanamke wake mwaminifu. Because these are the people that God is interested in. Kwa sababu hawa ndio watu ambao Mungu ana, anawapenda. And God took an infertile couple. Na, na mungu akachukua uh, uh, wanandoa ambao walikuwa 
hawezi kuzama a middle aged couple uh, wana ndoa wa umri wa utu uzima wakati they thought that their child bearing years were in the past uh, ambao waliona ya kwamba uh, uwezo wao wa kuzaa umeshapita zamani huko and in the same way that Aaron's rod budded na namna ile ile ambayo fimbo ya ya, ya Haruni ilivyo ilivyo mea ilivyo mea he took a descendant of Aaron Elizabeth akamchukua mmoja wa uzao wa Haruni Elizabeth and her womb budded akamfanya tumbo lake lizae and she produced this child na akawa amemzaa huyu mtoto and his name was to be John na jina lake alikuwa aende kuitwa Yohana and God said in verse 15 na, na Mungu anasema katika fungu la 15 that he will be great in the sight of the lord na kwamba atakuwa mtu mkuu mbele za mungu you see god didn't say that herod was great back in verse 5 Una, unaona katika katika fungu la 5 mungu hakusema kwamba herode ni mkuu katika fungu la 5 but he said that john would be great in verse 15 lakini katika fungu la 15 anasema yohana atakuwa mkuu mbele za mungu because john would do things god's way kwa sababu yohana angekwenda kufanya mambo kama mungu vile ape John would be a man who would prepare people for the day of the Lord. Kwa sababu Yohana angekuwa mtu ambaye angewaandaa watu kwa ajili ya siku ya Bwana. With the spirit and power of Elijah. Ka, katika roho na nguvu ya Elia to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. Kugeuza mioyo ya baba iwaelekee watoto to make ready a people prepared of the Lord. Kuandaa watu wawe tayari kwa ajili ya Bwana wao. And my brothers and sisters. Na ndugu zangu na dada zangu. In this day and in this age. Kwa katika siku hizi na kizazi hiki we've been called to prepare a people for the day of the lord tumeitwa kuandaa watu kwa ajili ya siku ya bwana jesus is coming soon yesu anakuja upesi jesus is coming soon yesu anakuja upesi this is not just something we say siki hiki sio kitu ambacho tu tunakisema this is something we believe hiki ni kitu tunachokiamini jesus is coming soon yesu anakuja upesi and our purpose is na kusudi letu ni ni kwamba like john the baptist kama kama yohana mbatizaji and like his father and mother na kama baba yake na mama yake to prepare a people for the day of the Lord. watu kwa ajili ya siku ya Bwana. You see he walked straight past Herod. Unaona Mungu alimruka, alimruka, ali ali He walked straight past Herod. Ali ali ruka moja kwa moja akamruka Herod kwenda mpaka kukina Zakaria. God wasn't interested in the buildings that Herod built. Mungu hakuwa ana 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 anavutiwa na majengo yale ambayo Herod alikuwa anajenga. God wasn't interested in Herod because he lived in a palace. Mungu hakuvutiwa na Herod kwa sababu alikuwa anaishi kwenye ikulu. God was interested in Zechariah and Elizabeth. Mungu alivutiwa na Zakaria na Elizabeth. He knew their name. Alijua majina yao. He knew where to find Zechariah and Elizabeth. Alijua mahali pa kuwapata Zakaria na Elizabeth. And God visited them. Na Mungu akawatembelea. Spoke to them. Akaongea nao, empowered them. Akawawezesha and they produced a son. Na wakazaa mtoto, a son who the world remembers as John the Baptist. Mwana ambaye ulimwengu unamkumbuka kama Yohana Mbatizaji. We know a lot about John the Baptist. Tunajua mengi kuhusu Yohana Mbatizaji. We know the clothes that he wore. Tuna, tunajua mavazi aliyovaa. We know the food that he ate. Ana tunajua chakula alichokula. We know the message that he proclaimed. Tunajua ujumbe aliyoutangaza. And today millions and billions of people know John the Baptist. Na leo watu mamilioni na mabilioni wanajua juu ya Yohana Mbatizaji. But no one knows of Herod the 
so-called great. Lakini hakuna anayejua Herode aliyejulikana kama mkuu. Herod the Great died. Herod mkuu alikufa and nobody cared. Hakuna aliyejali. But when John the Baptist was alive and doing his ministry. Lakini Yohana Mbatizaji alipokuwa hai na akiwa akifanya akiendelea na huduma zake. He changed the world. Aliubadilisha ulimwengu. People came to John the Baptist even though he was in the desert. Mungu watu walimwendea Yohana Mbatizaji hata kama alikuwa kule jangwani. People were too afraid to visit Herod in his palace in case he killed them. Ah watu walikuwa wanaogopa kumtembelea Herod akiwa ikulu maana waliogopa huenda angeliweza kuwaua. But multitudes went out to see John the Baptist. Ah watu walikuwa wakienda jangwani kukutana na Yohana Mbatizaji. Because he had a message from God. Kwa sababu alikuwa na ujumbe kutoka kwa Mungu. Because he was empowered by God. Kwa sababu alikuwa amewezeshwa na Mungu. My brothers and sisters. Ndugu zangu na dada If you want to live a life that matters. Kama unataka kuishi maisha yaliyo na thamani. If you want to live a life that's remembered. Kama unataka kuishi maisha ambayo yatakumbukwa. Follow Jesus Christ. Mfuate Yesu Kristo. Do ministry in the power of Jesus Christ. Fanya kazi katika nguvu ya Yesu Kristo. John the Baptist never looked for greatness. Yohana Mbatizaji hakutafuta ukuu. He like his parents were only interested in faithfulness. Yeye kama wazazi wake alikuwa tu anatamani kuwa mwaminifu. From this small man kutoka kwa mtu huyu mdogo great things have happened mambo makubwa yametokea and jesus said himself na yesu mwenyewe alisema that there's been no one else on this earth like john the baptist na kwamba hakujawahi kutokea mtu mwingine yeyote ulimwenguni hapa kama yohana mbatizaji john the baptist had the elijah message